co-host, Dave Grohl! You can see new episodes of his series from cradle to stage every Thursday on Paramount+. Plus. Uh, I lost my voice. This is what happens when you hang out with Dave Grohl. Yep. Yeah. One of the things that happened. <laughs> I love co-hosting the show with you. I think this is fun. Thanks this for is doing. amazing. I can't. Um, I'm so happy that you're letting me share your desk. Well, I, I, we have. A, this is our first time. We had and more than 50 people. We have 100 people in our audience. Oh, yeah. I figured bring the. La- it's coming back. Bring one of the. Ba- we're coming back. Coming back. I know it. Bring one of our favorite acts to come. Uh, that knows the big audience. When was the last time that you ever played in front of 100 people? Uh, like 1987? <laughs> yeah, exactly, maybe? yeah. Something like that. A long time ago. Do you remember, though, like, when it first started out and getting, like, 100 people oh, yeah. was a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, when I first started out, you know, I started out in neighborhood bands and stuff like that, and then I joined a band, a punk rock band that actually toured the country and Europe when I was, like, 17 years old. So I started touring in vans, little vans, and playing, like, little venues and stuff like that when I was, like, 17 or 18. And so that was kind of where I would like, cut my teeth and learned how to do it. And when I joined Nirvana, it was sort of the same way. Like, we were in a van playing small places that held one or 200 people. And then the band got really big really quick. And so, um, but, I mean, we used to play, when I first joined Nirvana, we would play places a tenth the size of this place. And really? then it just kind of went, Pow. Did you freak out when people know the words to your song and singing it back to you and singing it with you? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the best part of being in a band. Really? Uh, where you're in front of an audience and they're singing along with you and it becomes this really beautiful communal moment that, you know, <clears throat> that everybody's connected. That's the best part. And the bigger the audience, the better when that happens. Yeah, because they're all doing it. And you, it's you're, you have a new documentary out called What Drives Us mm-hmm. on Amazon, which is cool. They have a special thing on Amazon Video. It's Coda. Yeah. Uh, a Coda collection. So it's for musicians, people that love music, want to support music. It's uh, mm-hmm. about vans and, and whatever, a tour bus or whatever, you, whatever drove you to the gig. Yeah. Whether it be a, you know, whatever, a Nissan Maxima or yeah. whatever vehicle you had. Uh, it, you I just squeeze that. all your friends and all your stuff into this one little thing so that you could take your music to another place and share it with more people. Yeah. And the funny thing is in that documentary that you, you see that, like, you know, Beatles did the same thing. Yeah. So I interviewed younger bands that are, like, stuffing all their stuff equipment into a tiny van and sleeping in it and then i'm interviewing like ringo Starr from the beatles and he's talking about how the beatles did the same thing everybody kind of does it the same way is it, the is beatles it? fart in there i got fart stories from ringo Starr <laughs> about the beatles in the really yes they don't they did <laughs> they do they don't now i think they may <laughs> they don't Still. now absolutely yes not. it's true uh, is it odd to say that you're friends with the beatles yes does it feel weird or you're just Absolutely. Used to it? Well, <clears throat> we first, I, the, I mean, I grew, that's how I learned how to play music. I had a Beatles songbook and a guitar. And I would just listen to the records and do that. So the first time you, um, you meet one of them, it's just the, the one dimensional becomes the three dimensional and you kind of freak out a little bit. Yeah. But then over time, like if you become friends and you jam with each other, you know, it never wears off. I mean, there was one time when, uh, I had my third child, Ophelia, she was born, and Paul was in town with Nancy, and they said, uh, they said, hey, we want to come over and see the baby. So they came over to the house, and I mean, the first thing I did was hide all the Beatles stuff. Like, you never know, you know, you never know how much Beatles stuff you have in your house until a Beatle comes over. <laughs> like, that's embarrassing. And they're just like, oh my God. Tonight show like mugs. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. And uh, so he came over, and we hung out, and there was a piano uh, in our living room, and as he was leaving, he's like, he couldn't resist. And he just sat down and he started playing Lady Madonna on the piano in my living room. Okay, I freaked out. And, and you're just, I mean, it's blowing your mind. And then my daughter, Harper, who was like four years old at the time, she runs into the kitchen, she gets a coffee cup, she fills it full of spare change and puts it on the piano like a tip jar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good bit. That's good. That's a good bit. I mean, that was cool. Did he love it? He loved it. Absolutely. It was amazing. That's a, kind of the fun part about uh, all the giant bands, I want to say, is that their senses of humor. They're, they have a sense of humor and they're fun. Uh, they're great on stage. They're great musicians, but they're fun. And they're funny and they laugh. And I feel like you have that too. People well, feel you like have they... to imagine, like, you know, you can't take it too seriously. I mean, anybody that's seen, like, a Foo Fighters video or, you know, or this that we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you kind of, you, you have to, you have to be, be real and be true and, and passionate and uh, you have to honor the craft of making music, but then everything else you just kind of have to take with a grain of salt. Yeah, like you, didn't, you didn't want to really practice. You didn't want to rehearse. We, we, had... we do have a saying in the Foo Fighters that if it gets any better, it's going to get worse. 
So we actually, I don't like to rehearse because I like to get out on stage and just have it be raw and real so it's not like this big choreographed thing. So when we get up there, it's like that moment and it's super real. That's wild. Yeah. Were you, uh, were you always like that? I mean, you, you, you're, you have, an, there's another series based on your, a book that your mom wrote uh, called From Cradle to Stage. Yes. Basically raising a rock star. Yeah, my mom, okay, so my mother was a public school teacher for 35 years, and when she retired, she, I was like, mom, don't do that cruise ship thing. Like, you know, like retirees, I was, I was like, I was like, I got a cruise ship, it's a tour bus. Like, let's go. And she just jumped out, and she started going on tour with me. And I gave her a laminate, and she would just go like, hey, I'd be on stage playing, I'd get off stage, I'm like, where's my mom? Where's my mom? And she'd be like, you know, drinking beers with Green Day upstairs, and like, <laughs> And yeah, now, mom. And she's very cool. She's very cool. And so, but but then when she was on tour, she was like, "Where's all the other moms? Like, well, how, where are all the other moms?" So she went to go find these mothers to interview them and talk to them about what it's like to raise a musician. So in the book, she talked to Dr. Dre and she talked to Mike D and she talked to Pharrell's mom and she talked to Zach Brown's mom, Miranda Lambert's mom, and then so she made this great book. And then we did a documentary series, and that's the thing that's on TV now. It's yeah. awesome. Uh, that's super cool. And uh, I didn't bring it up, but uh, congrats on being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame again. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> mom, you did pretty well. You did a good job, Mom. Here's a clip. Here's Dave and his mom, Virginia, in From Cradle to Stage. Take a look. What I saw of Nirvana show where you destroyed all the instruments at the end of it. I was aghast. After growing up with not more than 10 cents left over each month, I thought you knew that one should not waste valuable materials. Uh, first of all, I didn't start it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, hey, you just finished it, that's all. You got a point.